So I, uh, I think we're going to get started. So welcome everybody to the 32nd International Conference on Formal Power Series and Algebraic Combinatorics, or uh, more uh, commonly known as FIPSAC. Uh, I'm Christian Gates. Today we will have three speakers, each talking for 25 minutes, with five minutes in between for questions and a short break. There will be a coffee break at the end of the session if you have time to stick around. Um, this coffee break is going to be held on, on Hangouts, which is a relatively new platform for breakout sessions. So it'll be a chance to socialize as well as test out a new platform. Um, please note that we are recording this talk to post to YouTube. And the speaker slides are available online. And you can find links on the website or in the chat. Uh, please keep your microphones muted to avoid background noise. Um, and the preferred way to ask a question is to use the chat. Alternatively, you can uh, raise your hand using the Zoom feature. Um, the chat monitor for today is Guy Yi Park. Uh, our first speaker is Vasu Tuari. Vasu, can you share your screen? One moment. All right, so let me make this full screen. So let me introduce Vasu Tuari, who is speaking on divided, symmetriz divided symmetrization and quasi-symmetric functions. Take it away. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, and a big thank you to the organizers for putting this uh, event uh, together. Um, and thank you all for zooming in. Right, so, so I'm going to be reporting on some work uh, joined with Philippe Nadeau at Lyon. So, so here's a quick uh, outline of the talk. Um, I'll begin by providing the definition of divided symmetrization uh, and context following uh, uh, Postnikov's work on permetahedra volumes and lattice points therein. Um, I'll move on to briefly describe our motivation, uh, which was a question in, in Schubert calculus. Um, and finally, I'll, I'll relate all of this to, to some work of Aval Bergeron Bergeron, uh, studying the polynomial ring modulo the ideal of quasi-symmetric polynomials. And, and here's a couple of references. Most of today is about the first article here. Um, but this was part of, I mean, all of this was building up to the second article. So if you want to know where things stand, uh, the second article is, is the one where we leverage uh, some of our results in the first article. Right, so the definition of divided symmetrization. If you give me a multivariate polynomial f in n variables, um, then here's what I do. I take f, I divide it out by product of xi minus xi plus ones, and take the uh, orbit of this rational function over the entire symmetry group. What I get, I call the divided symmetrization of f. And here's three examples. The first one is kind of lame. You start with the constant function one, you act with the symmetric group, you essentially flip signs, and the result is a zero. A tiny bit more exciting, is, is the monomial x1. And if I perform the divided symmetrization over the two element symmetric group, I essentially compute divided differences. Okay, so divided symmetrization over S2 is divided differences. So you get one again. And, and a little bit more non-trivial, as you started with the monomial x1 squared x2, and you perform this divided symmetrization over three letters, um, then, then what you obtain after you sum the six rational functions, uh, is x1 plus x2 plus x3. Some, some observations, contrary to appearances, divided symmetrization gets you honest polynomials, symmetric polynomials in the n variables. Uh, property two, which is kind of handy, anytime you have a symmetric factor, you can pull out the symmetric factor and perform the divided symmetrization on the rest. And thirdly, for polynomials of low degree, meaning the degrees less than n minus one, uh, divided symmetrization gets you zero. So facts two and three combine to already give you a simple um, vanishing result that says divided symmetrization vanishes on the degree n minus one uh, homogeneous uh, piece of the ideal generated by positive degree symmetric polynomials. Okay, so degree n minus one piece of the coinvariant or the invariant ideal divided symmetrization vanishes on it. Okay, so if the degree is n minus one, then the divided symmetrization is a scalar. Okay, so the first time divided symmetrization actually becomes interesting is when the degree is n minus one, and then you've got the philosophical question, had I given you an integer valued uh, integer coefficient polynomial, degree n minus one, and you perform divided symmetrization, you get an integer, 
and does this integer have a deeper meaning? Okay. And one answer to this comes from Postnikov's work on volumes of permetahedra. Okay. So here's the definition of a permetahedra. If you give me a point uh, lambda one through lambda n sitting inside Rn, uh, weakly decreasing coordinates, I take the Sn orbit of this point and I take the convex hull. The resulting polytope in Rn is a usual permetahedron, which I will denote by P sub lambda. Okay. So, so here's two permetahedra, one obtained by taking the S3 orbit of the point 100 and the standard permetahedron obtained by taking the orbit of 210. Okay, so observe that both of these permetahedra uh, belong to a plane. And for any polytope that belongs to a hyperplane, I define its volume to be the, uh, the usual volume once I project this polytope onto an n minus one dimensional space, which is gonna be the coordinate hyperplane xn equaling zero. Okay. So Postnikov proved that the volume of the usual permetahedron up to a factor of n minus one factorial can be obtained by performing divided symmetrization on the n minus one power of a linear form. Okay, so lambda one x one all the way through lambda n xn, raise it to the n minus one power, you've got something in the degree n minus one component and then perform divided symmetry. And if you try this with the standard permutahedron, you would get this kind of neat result, right? So the standard permutahedron has a tiling by parallelopipeds, and one knows for other reasons that the volume is supposed to be n to the n minus two. But if you're staring on the right-hand side here, you're starting with the n minus one power of this mess, taking a bunch of rational fractions and watching the thing collapse to n to the n minus two. This is definitely worth understanding what's going on here. Right, so that was the background. And now for our motivation. Um, our motivation comes from Schubert calculus. So recall the complete fag variety, right? So I take subspaces V1 living inside V2 and so on, where the dimension of VI is I. I'm interested in two particular Hessenberg varieties. The first one is a regular nilpotent Hessenberg defined as follows. Okay? So I take a nilpotent matrix of the single Jordan block. So imagine zeros on the diagonal, ones just above the diagonal. And I'm gonna be interested in flags which have this feature, which have this inclusion feature that you hit VI with X and you land inside V sub I plus one. And this is the Peterson variety. And similarly, you've got this other variety, the permetahedral variety, which showed up in uh, Federico's talk on, on Monday. Um, and this one's defined by using a diagonalizable matrix with distinct eigenvalues and a similar inclusion condition. Okay? So this one's a regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety. And I'm gonna be interested in these two varieties and in fact, exactly one of them. So here's the, the usual question one tends to ask. If I hand you a sub-variety living inside the complete fact variety, I, I want you to tell me it's cohomology class, um, preferably in the basis of Schubert classes. Okay, so I've got two varieties. They have dimension, complex dimension N minus one. And, and Anderson and Timarchko in 2007 uh, showed that both these varieties give the same cohomology class. Okay, so I'm gonna denote this class by tau sub n, and then I'm gonna be interested in the expansion in terms of Schubert classes. Okay, so I'm interested in particular integers. The dimension of the variety is n minus one, so I'm gonna be summing over permutations of length n minus one, and I'm interested in these coefficients a sub w, which happen to be non-negative integers uh, for reasons, for geometrical reasons, for being in section numbers. Okay, so these are the guys that we're interested in. All right, so here's the question restated. The, I, I, we wanna find a manifestly positive combinatorial rule to compute these A sub W. Um, and let me at least give you a sense of where things stood. Um, so Anderson Timochko already uh, in their 2007 paper expressed this class by way of a, cert, a sum over certain products of Schubert classes. Okay, so this involves Schubert multiplication. Uh, Don Kwan Kim uh, and Megumi Harada and her co-authors also expressed tau n in the same form as a sum of classes of Richardson varieties. Okay, so if you start with their formulation, you can express the A sub W in terms of uh, generalized literal Richardson coefficients, uh, except that computing these guys is, is, is hard. Okay, so um, there, there is some information out there, but not, not everything is known. So to compute these A sub W, uh, one has to bypass this uh, slightly thorny issue, right? So we have to approach this question via alternative means. 
Okay, so by Borel's isomorphism, uh, I can cast all this computation in the coinvariant algebra in type A. And then Anderson Timochko show that the class of the Peterson slash permutahedral variety is represented by this Vandermond like product. Okay, so I'm summing, oh, I'm taking the product of xi minus xj, where j minus i differ by uh, at least two. You can rewrite it using the Vandermond, and then you see this uh, thing that appeared earlier. This denominator contains the exact thing which appears in the denominator in the definition of divided symmetrization. Okay, so that's, that's perhaps the first hint that uh, there could be some connection. Um, and then the question becomes, I want to reduce this polynomial modulo uh, the invariant ideal and expand in terms of Schubert polynomials. Okay. Right, so Schubert polynomials, I'll define them using reduced pipe dreams, best on VI example. So pipe dreams are this combinatorial uh, gadget. If the permutation was one, four, three, two, I record the permutation along the columns and I record the identity permutation along the rows. I'm gonna place two types of tiles, either the red ones, elbows, or the blue ones, the crosses. And the aim is to connect I to I, so that two strands intersect at most once. So this is a reduced pipe dream for one, four, three, two. And with any such pipe dream, I attach a monomial, which is, I record the crossings, the rows in which the crossings lie, in this case, X1, X2, X3. So here's the beautiful result of uh, Billy Joko Stanley um, in terms of compatible sequences and Billy Bergeron in terms of pipe dreams. Uh, if PDW denotes all radius pipe dreams for the permutation W, take the monomials attached to these, sum them up, and what you get is a Schubert polynomial. Uh, and this is gonna be a homogeneous polynomial with the degree equal to the length of the permutation. All right. So here's, here's the first theorem. Um, those, those numbers A sub W that I talked about earlier can be obtained by subjecting the Schubert polynomials of the right degree to divided symmetrization. Or the equivalent formulation is the class tau N expands in this manner uh, written here. Right, so this kind of tells you nothing about how to compute um, the, the uh, expansion in terms of Schubert classes. Right, so you still have to deal with this pesky bit of how does one compute this divided symmetrization and it appears at this point, we've exchanged one difficult problem uh, for another. But, but luckily there's, there's some information about divided symmetrization uh, that will come in handy. Right, so here's the, the first year grad student approach to, to this question. Um, use the BJS expansion into monomials, understand divided symmetrization of monomials and put the result together. And luckily, uh, Postnikov already deals with this uh, divided symmetrization of monomials in his paper. Sadly, this results in a signed formula, but there's, there's uh, still some information that one can glean, uh, which, can, which can guide you further. Okay. So henceforth, I'll be dealing with monomials of degree n minus one. And given a weak composition of n minus one, I can easily attach a monomial by treating the composition as the exponent vector. Right, so here's a class of monomials that will play a key role. Um, I call a composition of n minus one, a Catalan composition, if the following condition holds, uh, the sum of the first j parts is at least j. That's a very classical Catalan object condition here. Uh, and this holds for all j less than n minus one. And monomials attached to these Catalan compositions, um, I call them Catalan monomials. Okay. So neat fact, Catalan monomials get you one uh, upon divided symmetrization. And this is nearly an if and only if statement. Okay, so, um, so for instance, here's a Catalan composition, two, zero, two, zero, zero, and the attached monomial x1 squared, x3 squared, when you divide it symmetrize over S5, you get exactly one. Right, so, so this already gets us our first result. Recall the notion of a code. I'll do this by example as well. Uh, for if you, if you hand me a permutation, I can attach a weak composition. For every position, I count the number of numbers that are smaller than the entry in that position. So three has two numbers smaller, so that's the two. One has nothing, so that's the zero. And similarly, two, zero, zero. Okay. So for, for permutations whose codes are Catalan compositions, divided symmetrization is counting pipe dreams, otherwise known as, and this is important, it's the all ones evaluation of a Schubert polynomial. 
Okay? So for Catalan many permutations, um, we have some sense of what uh, A sub W is. Okay, so this, this was a bit too easy. So let's, let's up the stakes a bit and deal with uh, divided symmetrization of, of uh, Schubert's attached to Grassmannian permutations, uh, otherwise known as Schur polynomials. Um, so recall that a Grassmannian permutation is a permutation with at most one descent, and that descent determines how many variables you put in your Schur polynomial. So, so Schur polynomials, recall, are obtained by attaching monomials to semi-standard Young tableau, um, and, and the subscript here means if I have m variables, then the maximal entry is m. Um, so, to, so now we're going to discuss the divided symmetrization of these polynomials, uh, and here's where tableau descents come into play. Okay. So the definition of a descent in a standard Young tableau is any entry i, where in going from i to i plus one, you go above. Okay, so this is French notation, um, and in fact, I'm writing partitions in a non-standard way, following Lascaux, so increasing as we go to the right. Okay. And for Grassmannian Schubert's divided symmetrization is counting standard Young tableau of the shape lambda determined by the code. And the number of descents allowed is m minus one. So if you look at this example, there's two tableau of shapes one, two, each have one descent each that tells you that the divided symmetrization of this Schur polynomial gets you two, oops. And had you asked for the divided symmetrization of three variables, you would get zero because there's no tableau with two descents. And alternatively, you probably realize this polynomial uh, S12, X1, X2, X3 lies in the invariant ideal. Okay, so this was supposed to vanish. So that's a good sanity check. And if I was to rephrase all of this, here's the rephrasing, um, which neatly packages a whole bunch of divided symmetrizations and hints at what might happen in general, okay? So here's the generating function for the all ones evaluation of a Schur polynomial, okay? hook content formula on the left. You write this as a rational function. The numerator records divided symmetrizations. So notice that N is one more than the size of lambda. And equivalently, if you know the descent statistic, this numerator can be uh, used, essentially it's the descent recording uh, generating function for Young tableau. Okay. And one, one pushes the, if, if, so right, so this is a good place to start looking for more. Um, and it turns out that this, this other formulation can be generalized to the case of vexillary permutations. Um, and the descent statistic has to be replaced by a new statistic, which has this neat property that it interpolates between the usual descents if you deal with Grassmannian permutations and you get usual ascents if you deal with dominant permutations and you get some pretty funky stuff in between. Okay, so um, some, some interesting behavior here. Okay. So, so far we've seen a Catalan object and, and then we've seen uh, descents in Tableau playing some role. Um, and this should hint at something to do with quasi-symmetric functions. So if you go to Google and you put the Google search string being Catalan quasi-symmetric, uh, you'll get a bunch of references on the first page and, and the answer or, or a hint lies on the first page itself. Okay, and this is where all the symmetric polynomials enter the picture. Right, so monomial quasi symmetric polynomials. Um, so if I have a composition alpha one through alpha m, n variables, I'm gonna sum monomials of the form xi one to the alpha one all the way through xi m to the alpha m, where the indices increase strictly and they're in the range one to n, uh, n. So here's m312, notice all exponents, they're 312. Notice all indices, they're increasing and lie in the interval one through four. If you take the Q span of these uh, polynomials, what you get is the ring of quasi-symmetric polynomials in n variables. Okay. Right, so I'm gonna consider the, the quasi-symmetric analog of the invariant ideal I n. So this is gonna be the ideal J n generated by positive degree quasi-symmetric polynomials in X1 to X n. And, and this was studied by uh, Jean-Christophe Aval, uh, Nantel and, and Francois Bergeron. And this, what you have is that the vanishing result from I n actually can be pushed further. 
And, and this takes a couple of pages, right? So this is not as easy as putting facts one, two and three together from before, okay? So degree n minus one homogeneous polynomials that lie in this ideal get you zero upon divided symmetrization. And that kind of tells you that to understand divided symmetrization, you should look at what remains, right? So you should look at the quotient of the polynomial ring modulo the ideal Jn. And luckily this will have a monomial basis, which you have already encountered earlier. Okay. So this is the ABB basis and it's indexed by parts, right? So here's the um, ABB basis. Um, so maybe the picture will explain better. You take all parts in a two by two box. So N equals three. And these parts do not have to cross the diagonal. I'm gonna attach a variable with every vertical step. So this is a vertical step in the second column. So that's an X2, a vertical step in the third column, that's an X3. And these two are the degree N minus one monomials in this monomial basis. Okay, so this is where divided symmetrization is, is hiding. So, and notice that there's five monomials, so that's Catalan three and top degree is Catalan two. Okay, so it also has a Catalan number hiding in the top degree. Right, so here's our result. Uh, those degree n minus one monomials, which do not cross the diagonal, I call them anti-Catalan monomials. And how do they relate to the Catalan ones from before? Just reverse the order of variables, and that's what you get. And then we have this result which says, if you were to hand me an arbitrary polynomial of degree n minus one, I will write it as a sum, take away all the things that lie in the quasi-symmetric ideal, and express the rest in this aval bergeron bergeron basis. Then divided symmetrization is the all ones evaluation. Right? All you're left to do is compute the normal form of a polynomial and count monomials. Okay, so this is, this is why the all ones evaluation was showing up earlier as well. One can already put this to work and, and see why descents were coming up in the earlier picture. Um, you need to understand divided symmetrization of fundamental quasi-symmetric polynomials. And, and you realize that they behave like chronic deltas essentially. Okay, so if you hand me a composition, if the number of variables happens to equal the length of the composition, then I'll get one upon divided symmetrization. Otherwise I'll get zeros. In other words, anytime you have something fundamental positive, computing divided symmetrization is dead easy. And a way to rephrase this result is start with the quasi-symmetric function, use all its truncations and use the all ones evaluation. Then the generating function on the left has a rational, uh, has this rational function expression and the numerator, the P Eulerian polynomial records uh, divided symmetrization. P Eulerian in case you were thinking about P partitions and quasi-symmetric functions. Okay. So, so this is why you're getting that the shoes upon divided symmetrization get you descent sets of young tableau. All right, so in, in the final two minutes, um, let me just state where we're headed next. So, so here's our big conjecture that would get you a positive interpretation um, for A sub W. Okay, so, so we, have, we have some partial results in this direction and here's what the conjecture states. Um, if you were to start with any Schubert polynomial, I'm gonna reverse the order of variables for, for reasons of not picking up a sign. If I reduce Schubert's modulo quasi-symmetric polynomials, then the resulting expression expands positively in the basis proposed by of all Bergeron, Bergeron. And then you count monomials in this expansion and that gets you a hopefully a combinatorial interpretation for these divided centralizations. Um, we, we have some stronger conjectures in this direction, um, but we happen to find the answer for A sub W at a tiny cost uh, by working in a different ring. And this is our last result, um, which I'll state, right? So here's a positive expression for the A sub W. Um, think permutations W and red W is the set of reduced expressions for this permutation. For every reduced expression, I'm gonna record the number of times every simple transposition appears in that expression. Since the permutation has length n minus one, this composition is gonna have size n minus one, which is, which is the right size, right? Um, and then our result says A sub W is a certain sum of mixed volumes. Okay, so mixed volumes indexed uh, for, for these expressions, which are you know, 
corresponding to standard hypersimplices with multiplicities C1, C2, and so on. Okay, and, and this ranges over all reduced worlds. So all reduced worlds get you certain mixed volumes, which are rational numbers, you add them, and you get in magically an integer. Okay, and this gets you that AW are indeed positive. And in fact, these mixed volumes can be computed. There, there are explicit formulae to do this task. Okay. And I will end there. Thank you very much. All right, let's thank the speaker uh, in the chat or using the Zoom features. Uh, we do have five minutes or so for questions. So I'll pass that over to our chat moderator, uh, Gai Park. Okay, we have several questions here. Um, Nancy Wallace asked, do you have nice formulas for the coefficients of the generating functions for the number of descents? Oh, do we have individual, in terms of mixed Eulerian numbers, yes. Okay, so, so maybe I should flip the question. We actually get formulas for mixed Eulerian numbers in terms of uh, tableau descents. Um, Edward Richard asked, is the ABB basis related to leading monomials of Schubert polynomials? Not really, right? So it's, it's what you get by looking at um, paths that never cross the diagonal. So it's, it's kind of neatly attached with dick paths. Um, it doesn't, all, those monomials can appear in Schubert polynomials, but they probably won't be leading monomials unless you're working with some uh, new term order, which, which I don't know. Maybe. Um, ben Young uh, asked, does Q divided symmetrization give you principal specialization? Well, so, so maybe it's so a short answer. One can get Q, Q principal specializations of Schubert's as well. Um, and the answer lies in not working with this divided symmetrization perspective. The final slide that I showed, the computations are carried out in the rational cohomology ring of the permutahedral variety. And that in, is another algebra in which you can perform these computations. And that cohomology ring has a nice presentation where you can insert a Q. Um, and, and the hope is one can get principal specializations of Schubert's as well. I do not know how to tweak the definition of divided symmetrization yet to account for a Q. Um, maybe you can have one more question. Another question, oh, maybe a couple more. Um, another question is, is it possible that some of these methods can extend to other Hassenberg varieties besides uh, the PN and perm N that you showed in the slides? So, so you, you, can, you can express for any Hessenberg variety, I can run this game of Schubert divided by some, something in the denominator and performing a symmetrization. Uh, so we've tried it for uh, other Hessenberg varieties, but I don't think I have a clear idea yet that this computes those structure coefficients is, is fact. Uh, but do I have a good way to do this? No, not yet. Um, Joel asks, for the last formula, fully commutative three to one avoiding permutations will be relatively nice. Is that already covered by your other result? Yes, yeah, so the fully commutative case, uh, the, the final expression I showed reduces to essentially one, one thing, right? Because all, all the sum over reduced words become one single expression. Um, so, um, sorry, let me read that question again. So, so our final expression works for all permutations of length n minus one. So the three to one avoiding are in there. Whether you can derive, um, you know, Naruse's hook length formula or something, uh, that, that's, that's something we leave open in our remarks section in the second paper. Okay, so. I, I don't know um, if I've answered the question, but I hope so. Okay. Uh, I think that's most of the questions that I see. Oh, there's one more question maybe. Um, has anyone looked at symmetrization with product of xi and xj in the denominator where from zero to i minus j to k for some fixed k? Yeah, so this is, this is uh, kind of what I was referring to earlier. So I think uh, some of the Japanese school call these K-banded Hessenberg varieties where you run over Xi minus Xj where the difference is at least K. I've, I've run some code, but I, I really do not have a good answer uh, at this moment to say anything meaningful. Yeah, good, good suggestion, yes. Okay, so that's uh, so the last question for now. Um, you can leave other questions for Vasu uh, after. 
the session. Thank you. All right, let's let's thank Vasu one more time. And the next speaker is Oya Mandelstein. And Oya, you can go ahead and show your slides.